Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of Musical Postcards for Seniors. I am your host, George Shar, and I have the honor of being the music teacher at Falmouth Academy. This series brought to you every Sunday at 1 p.m. on local cable TV stations is featuring students in the music department at Falmouth Academy. This week is a very special week. We have our first vocalist who will be joining us today. And you are gonna be welcoming her in just a few minutes. You were gonna love this young lady. Very special treat. She, uh, her name is Maisie Saganic, or Mary Elizabeth. And we're gonna talk about that when we get to meet her. And she's going to be singing three selections for you today. This first selection by Edith Piaf, a great international star from France. I'm sure a lot of you know and remember Edith Piaf. This is called La Vie en Rose. Maisie, that was cool, Maisie Saganic. Thank you. That was really cool. What's it like to sing such a passionate song in your living room? You know, <laughs> uh, what, what, that must be hard. What is that? What's that like? Um, well, it's not exactly like the stage at Fonz Academy. The acoustics <laughs> aren't quite as good. <laughs> um. That's true. You have some beautiful sofas and some stuffed uh, pillows over there, and they all absorb the sound. So, you know, we have a very special program here, and, and this program is made to, to, to bring some music and some love and some life and some, and some youth into our, into our culture. I want to talk a little bit about Edith Piaf, because she is quite an international sensation. So let me set the stage for you. Uh, Edith Piaf was born in 1915. She died in 1963. And she is she's a very one of the one of the century's most widely known international stars, of course. And La Vie en Rose. And Maisie, tell our audience members what does La Vie en Rose translate to? So literally it translates to life in pink. Um, but a lot of people translate it as life in roses or like life in a pink 
like a rose colored glasses kind of like rose colored glasses i did yeah. not know that i just thought it was like a life in roses but it's in the pink fabulous but there's a fascinating story that goes along with the with the writing of this song and the lyrics and then the publication would you tell our audience how this came about i would love to so Edith Piaf was a cabaret jazz singer um, around World War II era. I think La Vie en Rose was actually written in 1945 and published in 47. Um, so around that time, women, I think we all know, didn't really have um, as much of a prominent stance in society as men did. Um, so obviously Edith knew that um, a female jazz singer uh, coming to a music production company with a song that she had written and produced by herself uh, would probably be rejected. So she had a friend of hers named Louis Ouija. Um, his last name, by the way, is not spelled how you would expect it would be. It's very long <laughs> and hard to pronounce. Um, but he's more commonly known as Louis Guy. Um, so she came and she asked her friend Louis Guy, hey, uh, do you mind publishing this under your name for me, like bringing it to producers, and he did. And so now on all the rights of the music, like the music, actual music sheet that I have um, from my chorus director and vocal teacher, Miss Vicky Vieira, um, it has his name and her name under it. Um, but everyone knows that she wrote it. So. Isn't that a fascinating story? So Maisie, what you may not know and what our audience might might enjoy knowing is this is um, this uh, women's movement has been in place for a long time and 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 every year we get a little more progress, but there's still a long way to go. And um, my mother um, was a drummer in World War II. And many of you uh, know that because some of you met her, you're a junior at Falmouth Academy. And she passed away about two years ago. She was 100. And so she experienced, and therefore I lived through a lot of these uh, stories as, as I was growing up. So what you say is right on. Um, a woman had, had a, not a very good chance of getting past the publishers and the DJs and so on. So that was a very smart move on Edith Piaf's part. And you, that story was very, very charming and, and well told. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, so let's talk about you now for a bit. So you are, you are quite a singer and you have many other interests too. We're gonna to talk about that. So what, what lit you up about singing? How, when did you start to sing and what was that? When did you realize that, you know, I, I think I wanna to go to Falmouth Academy and sing. And I know you have bigger plans than that too. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, I always remember when I was little, especially just growing up watching those Disney movies <laughs> um, with the princesses all singing and stuff. And I think when I was five or six, maybe somebody, I think my mother, maybe my grandmother got me an Annie DVD, the one with um, Carol Burnett. And I would just run around the house, just singing all the songs from that um, in my room and stuff and just singing and dancing. I always loved Elton John too. <laughs> my dad, I had a Muppet Show DVD when I was little as well. Um, and that featured Elton John and Julie Andrews. And I really fell in love with Elton John when I was like three. And so then I remember my dad buying me my first radio when I was like maybe four or something and like getting me an Elton John uh, CD and I just would play it all the time. I still have it. So you're an expressive thing. I can see it here and you're talking. You're very effusive. You're very, uh, you're very warm and bubbly. And you always were like that. I have a picture here that your mother shared with me. I'm going to put up on the screen now. And this is you in the second, maybe, or the third grade. And you're singing with the chorus. And look at this picture. Aren't you cute? Standing there shouting it out amongst all of the choristers. And I believe that was taken at Mullen Hall School yes, up on the stage. Ellen Hall, the one for all. Isn't that great? <laughs> so you've always been, um, you've always been interested in being a singer. And yeah. mom also tells me that you uh, used to run around the room singing with your stuffed animals. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> um, I didn't really have much of an audience. Uh, I was an <laughs> only child for the first five years of my life. Um, and I was also kind of shy about singing. So I would just sing in my room to my animals. 
Interesting. <laughs> That's great. Well, you certainly developed confidence and a great voice. And so, you know, let's talk a little bit about, you talked about the chorus teacher at Falmouth Academy, Miss Vicky Victoria Vieira. Um, and she's also your private uh, instructor. Is that right? Yes. So uh, I've known Vicky Vieira for a long time and she's a consummate professional. And what's it like to study with her? I mean, when you have chorus, you're with 18 people and you're all in chorus, but then you get her all by yourself every, you know, for a half an hour or an hour a week. What's that like? What's she like? She's so fabulous. I love her attitude. She's always so, so happy to see me and to see all the kids in chorus. She loves to sing and she loves to hear us sing. And she, she's just awesome. And I feel like my vocal performance has definitely improved throughout uh, the few months that I have been working with her. She is definitely a positive and loving person, and that's why she's there. We just love her immensely, and I'm glad to hear that. So that's terrific. So now you have another song for us that we're going to segue to. Um, tell us about this other song. So this next song is called So Far Away. Some of you may know it. It's by Carol King. I uh, remember. <laughs> it was published in her 1971 Tapestry album. Uh-huh. Um, that's a CD, another CD that my mom used to play all the time when I was little in the car. Well, well, wait a minute. I have to stop you there, Maisie. We didn't have CDs in 1971. <laughs> we had eight-track tapes. So you know, some of our audience will remember the big eight-track tape was a big deal because you could put it in your car and it wouldn't bounce <laughs> like a record. Before that, you couldn't put a record in your car. So the eight-track tapes, they came in. In fact, I put one in the glove box of my car because people were stealing them. And then you would buy the eight track tape and stick it in there and you could play. So Tapestry was, a, they did call it an album and you're right. And it was a CD and it was a record album. And so It's Too Late was also on that album. And you know, there's another connection to, to Carol King that I don't even think you know about. And it fits in with the theme of what we're talking about here. Later on in Carol King's career, she wrote, um, a song called You Make Me Feel Like a Natural Woman. Mm. And that doesn't that just tie it all up together here? Ladies and gentlemen, here is Maisie Saganic singing So Far Away. Maisie, that was just fantastic. And, you know, so far away, and here we are, we're all shelter in place. I mean, I don't know if you chose that song for this show because of that, but it's really, it's sad. Yeah. And this is a sad time. And for those of us that are watching the show that have lived through World War II, this is, um, this is a big deal. It's not as big as World War II, maybe, but it really has impacted everybody on the planet. 1971, uh, Carol King and Tapestry and It's Too Late 
and So Far Away was the Grammy album of the year um, and a very popular song. So uh, this song, just to, this, uh, this show, just as a reminder, ladies and gentlemen, Musical Postcards for Seniors premieres every Sunday at one o'clock, but you can also see it on Facebook and Vimeo and YouTube. Uh, and it's on your local cable network and it uh, features uh, music students from Falmouth Academy. So we have a very special friend and uh, Cape Cod Apartments. I know you guys are watching today over there at Cape Cod Apartments. Thank you so much. You are one of our most avid viewers. In fact, <laughs> I got an email from them last week. Who was the star this week? I love that. And uh, Atria and Royal McGansett and Royal Nursing Home and tied in a Mashpee and uh, and several others of you. In fact, we're we're happy to to uh, welcome the Martha's Vineyard Cable uh, Network to uh, to this show, and I hope that there's a lot of seniors on the Vineyard watching this as well. So Maisie, now let's talk uh, a little bit about you and and about maybe maybe your non music because I know you from Falmouth Academy, and um, <laughs> you have a lot of other interests. So. What other things do you really like other than music? Well, I think the only other thing I spend the majority of my time doing other than music is making art, like drawing and painting. Um, I really love to do that. I've taken advanced drawing two years at Founds Academy. I couldn't do it this year, unfortunately, because my lab period took up uh, the period that Miss Nelson taught it. Um, and I also have taken advanced painting last year. Um, and I really love it so much. There's something so freeing about just being able to draw whatever you see in front of you. And I don't know. So you have Mrs. Nelson, Mrs. Lucy Nelson as your advanced drawing and your advanced painting teacher. And she's just a wonderful, also loving and also supporting teacher. And she, she is just great. And we have some of your work here. I'd like to put those up on the screen right now. Isabel, who's doing our production. And a reminder to all our folks at home, we are all doing this from our own homes. So, um, so I, I wanna put up now Isabel doing tech. She's from her home producing this show. And Isabel's gonna put up a couple of self portraits here. So this first one here is a, is a drawing, I think. Is this a, a drawing of you when you were what age? Do you know, can you tell us a little bit about this painting? Yeah, so this uh, drawing was, it was a blind contour. I think it was meant as originally a warm-up exercise that we were doing. Um, and so basically what a, what a blind contour is, is you look at something that you want to draw, and then you draw it, but you don't look back at the paper. You just <laughs> sketch what you see, um, which is why it looks kind of weird and wiggly. Um, so let me get this straight. So you're watching something and then you just you put your pencil on the paper and you move the pencil without watching your hand yeah <laughs> you're trying to draw the shapes that you see <laughs> is, that like, is that like flying a plane without looking out the window I, <laughs> kind of that, it doesn't always end up uh so great looking <laughs> well i i actually have seen mrs nelson with that class and i was impressed one year she brought the whole class in to observe the orchestra playing and she had them sit around the orchestra and I noticed that they were just drawing and those pictures came out surprisingly. Oh, yeah. they, were, they, were, they were really cool. They were, they were very creative. Maisie, I can't imagine painting, drawing, blind contour. That must be so hard. Now we have another self-portrait here that you did with another medium. Tell us about this one. Yeah, so this one I did with charcoal um, and it's just, <laughs> it's kind of funny. It's this massive, piece of paper um, and it's just a picture of me like looking up at a light source that Miss Nelson is holding up um, and it's I really love to work with charcoal because it's it's kind of painterly in the way that it's like more gestural than like a, a pencil drawing um, and you can blend it and you can take it away um, it's just a, a really awesome medium to work with um, and I sent that piece and the previous piece, the um, blind contour piece, to a regional art uh, competition, and I won second place for the yes. first. I, 
I, I remember that, yeah. The, the, uh, the Secondary Independent Schools Art Association is a regional competition. I believe it's up in Brookline every year. In fact, Falmouth Academy, if I'm not mistaken, was one of the founders of that school. I don't know if you knew that. Uh, Mrs. Nelson's predecessor, a woman from Sandwich named Margaret Ellsworth. And we still have to this day an award, an arts award, that we give away every year to a most deserving student called the Margaret Ellsworth Award. So that's, that's a fascinating story. Thank you, Maisie. Thank you. Fascinating stuff. All right, and how about this next picture? I think this next picture might be a, a painting of a, of a famous beach in our area. Is that right? Yeah. Um, so this is a painting that I did uh, last year as part of our Hudson River School project. Oh wait, no, sorry, that was this year. This year as a part of our <laughs> Hudson River School project uh, for English class. Every uh, junior in English class at Founds Academy um, works on something like this. So we're studying lots of um, realist language and writing, um, as well as the Hudson River School artists who went up uh, way up north to unexplored territory in uh, New York and stuff. And they just were drawing these fantastic, huge, enchanting images um, of the nature that they saw so that they could bring it back to the rest of society. So here in this painting is Chappaquoia Beach. I'm sure many of you uh, have heard of that beach, if not yeah. been there. Um, I basically grew up on that beach. I lived <laughs> right around the corner for the first 12 years of my life, but I spent a lot of time there, lots and lots of summers there. And yeah, I just really, the seaweed all across the beach really was interesting looking to me. Um, and the sun going down created just this really, really gorgeous orange color that I really loved and thought would work really well for that project. So let me tell the audience that if they're not familiar with Chappa Chappaquoit Beach, or, or Chappy as we call it locally, it's in West Falmouth. So when the sun sets, it sets across Buzzards Bay and it sets over the water. And people from Falmouth go in their cars to that beach and other beaches on that, on that west shore to watch the sunset. But Chappy Beach is famous for something else that little kids love to do. What is that? There's this awesome little like bay area on the other side of the road from Chappie. So you're driving down Chappaquoit Road, over here's the beach, over here um, there's like West Falmouth Harbor and Bay Area, and there's this little inlet, um, and there's so always so many hermit crabs and those funny fiddler crabs with the one big claw <laughs> and um, periwinkles and stuff, and it's really a neat area. The water's always warm over there because it's not connected directly to the ocean. So the tide goes out and it leaves these little ponds of little tidal pools of, of all of these animals that little kids love to, and never mind little kids, I love to do it too. My kids have grown <laughs> up, we used to go there. My wife still goes there and we ride bikes, but uh, scooping them up with nets is really, is quite a romantic idea. Chappaquoy Beach, well that is just a beautiful, um, that is just a beautiful painting. Now, you also, um, you also have a pet, and uh, is, is that pet nearby? I think you were just, it, it is, this is, I, I'd like to introduce, is he sleeping? No? Um, I heard him go into my mom's room. I think let's, see, let's see if we can find your pet. So we're, we're going to look for, uh, Maisie has a pet called um, a cocker poo, which I believe is a, is a cross between a cocker spaniel and a poodle. And this pet is so cute. We're going to bring this pet right into the screen if we can. And this pet is named Butchie. Oh, thank you for bringing Yay. Butchie. Oh, look at, look at, look at, look. So this is Butchie. I was just telling our audience. Butchie is what? What is Butchie? What kind of dog? <laughs> Butchie is a cockaboo. He's four years old. Would you hold him up just a little bit so we can see him? Oh, he loves you. Sure. Butchie, do you like it when Maisie sings? I bet, I bet he does. Look at that bundle of fur. Four years old. He needs a haircut. Oh, isn't he cute? He's super cute. Oh, look at, look at, look at. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why the dogs always want to kiss you on the mouth. <laughs> He's very cute. All right. So thank you. Um, Maisie, that's a, that's a great, 
that's a great conversation. You're a great singer. You have a wonderful life. And you know, you're also, let's not leave Falmouth Academy before we tell our audience that you're also involved in the drama department, led by, led by Elizabeth Ledwell and Bronwyn Prosser. You've been in plays for ever since I can remember. And I think <laughs> I have a few photos here uh, of some plays that you were in. What was the most recent play you were in? You were telling me earlier. Um, well, Shakespeare, maybe? This picture here was from a play that I did uh, in freshman year, and it was called Sherlock Holmes and the Portal of Time. <laughs> yes, <laughs> was, I remember. It was a goofy play, but it was yeah. a lot of fun. Um, I played Vera Erickson, who was Moriarty's accomplice, and we gave her a Southern accent along with Moriarty, because we found these funny cowboy hats just lying around Miss Ledwell's room. Um, and then we put them on for one rehearsal, and then it, it kind of just stuck. Um, and that was a lot of fun. All right. Well, Maisie, thank you so much. You are just, just a delight to get to know, and, and our audience is just going to love you. Thank you so thank much. You. So, well, ladies and gentlemen, Maisie has one more song for us, and it is really very appropriate for what we're going through during this time of pandemic and shelter in place. And boy, I don't go to the supermarket once every two weeks. And when I do, I wear gloves and I wear masks and, and I carry isopropyl alcohol around in my car and it really is a different world. And we all know as uh, mature adults that these kids are going to remember these times. I only hope that they remember them fondly and that they grow as individuals, as musicians and as human beings as we all have had to go on through tough times in our lives. So uh, Maisie, tell us a little bit about this next song you're going to sing. Sure. I love so, this song. I'm sure all of you probably know this song. It's called What a Wonderful World mm. it's by Louis Armstrong. Um, and it's just a really beautiful song about how beauty is found in the simplicity of, of everything, you know, the colors of the sky, or the leaves on the trees, or just listening to babies. Um, and it's a really pretty piece. Yeah, it really is. And, and this is just such an appropriate song to close this episode on. So ladies and gentlemen, until next Sunday at 1 p.m., this is George Shar and the students of Falmouth Academy, Isabel Hurd doing technical and editing this week. And here is Maisie Saganik. What a wonderful world. Thank you.